What's going on y'all? Squirrel with Florida Lead Slingers Outdoors. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm out at a new hunt lease and with archery season coming in and zone A starts I think the end of this month and then zone C will be starting about a month after that. So I use my dog, you've probably seen her in my other videos, uh, her name's Piper. She is a full-blooded beagle and she's about two years old just under two years old right now and she is coming into her second tracking season so i'm gonna do a little bit of a mock track to get her ready for it what i do is i get a broomstick nothing much nothing fancy i use a little piece of wire uh you can use a rope you can use whatever you want and then a deer foot this is from a doe that i shot last year um the key is to get one that has run off um, deer, if you don't know, they have an interdigital gland. So the interdigital gland is inside there. Whenever they feel pain, whenever they are surprised something, they set off a scent out of the interdigital gland. Well, my dog is trained for that interdigital scent. So she's not actually following the deer scent. She's not actually following blood. A lot of people try to call it blood tracking, but it's not any of that. It's following that interdigital scent. So, if you shoot a deer that doesn't have any blood, but is mortally wounded, it's going to be putting out the interdigital sense, and a dog can track that. Once I get this set up, I stick it out away from me, so that I know that she's not following my scent, she's following the deer scent, and I'm just going to drag it. I'm going to walk a couple hundred yards, maybe a mile, we'll see. Um kind of haven't done one in a while so might do a little bit easy one so that she picks it up and then do a harder one in a day or two um but i'll drag it out this morning and i'll either let her follow it tonight or tomorrow morning um just get her in shape get her going so she's ready for this coming season all right so i found the spot where i'm going to start the track just kind of pick any spot um sometimes i'll pick a spot where i've got a stand at I'll pick a spot where I know there's some tree trails and stuff that can kind of throw the scent off. This spot looks as good as any to me. Looks like some woods, some thick stuff that give her a little bit of a challenge. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pull out my Onyx app and I'm going to start the track right here. So now I just let the deer leg sit, I step away and I will start dragging. Now don't be afraid to let it skip off the ground. If there's a 10 foot stretch that the leg doesn't or the foot doesn't touch the ground, it's not a big deal. Deer, they run, they jump. They've got a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff going on on a real track that's very hard to simulate. So deer, they might fall, that's leaving body scent. Um, they might jump, they might run through water. They can double back, bunch of stuff. Um, that's just difficult to prepare for. So nothing beats a real track, but doing this gets her in shape and helps out a lot. Um, doing this it makes it so that i know that she's going to be locking on on the inner digital scent because that's not something that she's going to lock on to immediately that is something that comes with age um i don't feel that she's locked on to it completely yet um she knows the difference between a live deer and a dead deer um she definitely gets a lot more excited when she knows that it's a dead deer um but she doesn't mind trying to chase a live deer. So doing these tracks kind of helps out and makes it so that she locks onto that inner digital scent. We're up to the point where I'm going to do our first 90 degree turn. In these, what I always do is I make sure that there's a 90 degree turn in them so that she can check herself. So usually when you're tracking a deer or whenever you shoot a deer, the deer is going to run straight. It's going to veer. It usually doesn't stop and just change directions. Well, what a dog will do is it's following the scent. It starts just going in the direction of the deer also. So whenever 
whenever you stop and you change directions, if the deer, if the dog is just following in a straight line, she can overshoot the the track, the line that she's on. Well, do, what doing the 90 degree turns is it makes her overshoot it, and then she's gonna get to a point where she doesn't smell the deer anymore. She's gonna stop, she's gonna start smelling harder, and she's gonna turn. So that's what I did back there. I turned, went into the woods a little bit further, still dragging it, still veering. Um, and this is all tracked with my phone, so I'll be able to find the trail later. You see how I did a little skip there, kind of just brought it over. That's going to be a spot where she might have some trouble with, but she'll figure it out. I got faith in her. All right, so here we are. We're at the end of the track. Um, I decided only doing a couple hundred yards, um, about a quarter of a mile, actually. Um, just kind of went through that thick stuff in here, went all around. You can see on the Onyx map, um, kind of did a loop. It doesn't do, show as sharp a turns that I made, um, but made a couple sharp turns in there, doubled back a little bit down there, see if that tricks her out a little bit. And I'll probably, probably later this afternoon is when I'll end up doing this track, but I'll bring you guys with me. Now again, I'm seeing from the tractor, she is off the trail just a little bit. Um, it looks like she's figured that out. And she's kind of turning around to go find out where she got off of it at. There she goes. She is back on it. Right, she's coming up on the home stretch here. I think maybe about a hundred yards further. And she will be at the end of the track. You, sometimes I lay a piece of hide down there, play tug of war with her. Sometimes I'll give her some treats and stuff. But what I've seen most is just giving her praise. She gets the most excited about the praise. Oh. See now. I just made a mistake here. I'm following her. She has lost the track and I already walked past her. So now she's having to double back, having to figure out from my scent and the track scent. And there she goes. I believe there's another hard turn that she's about to hit. And she is right on the trail.
like this oak tree straight in front of it is where I ended the track looks like she's on it in the real world we'd be able to see the deer from here but on a tracking scenario I want her to walk right up to the base of the tree which is what she's about to do Good girl. Good girl, Piper. That's it. That's it. Found him. You found him. Hey, good girl. Oh, and it looks like now she's searching for it because there's nothing at the end of this one. Good girl. Good girl. You found him. You found him. Good girl. And that's what it is. So, all in all, I'd say that's a pretty successful uh, training mock track, as you will. I'm um, looking at my Onyx map. The blue line is the track that I laid, and the red line is the track that she took. See, it looks like she overshot, she missed a little bit, but she corrected herself, and she did really good. Um, I'm pretty pleased with what she did. All right, I'll probably do a couple more of these before the season starts. Um, this year, I'm hopefully going to be tracking on the Florida Blood Trail Network. i um, been in discussion with them trying to get my name on the list. There's a whole mentorship program and everything that you have to go through. So that's the plan for this year. Um, I'm also tracking on my own. You can, I'll be in Central Florida, um, Central North Florida, Northwest Florida. That's all I got for you today.